Hi, I'm Rob with Skid Steer Genius, and today I'm going to introduce to you how to set up a Skid Steer snowblower. This is a brand new snowblower we're putting on a Bobcat, but some of the methods I'm going to show you can be used on any type of machine. So let's first start with the setup of the hoses. Okay, it's really important that you've got this spinning in the right direction. Okay, and, and most machines have a setup in such a way that when you apply hydraulic force to them with the trigger switch or the locking detent switch, what it's going to do is only going to go in one direction. On a low flow machine, it's not quite as important uh, if you're able to lock it in either direction. However, if you're trying to run a, a high flow version of this, it's not going to work properly. Because what happens is when you run it in reverse, you don't get high flow. All your lights come on, everything shows you that you have high flow, but you're actually not getting high flow out the couplers because of the way the blocks are situated and how they're set up inside the machines. So it's really important that we follow the setup procedure and make sure that we've got this thing spinning the right way. So what we wanna do is make sure that the direction is going in the right way here. So looking at the cutting edge here, we wanna make sure that's spinning forward and that the auger is turning in such a way that it pulls everything into the center fan here. I've even drawn an arrow here for you to see, just to show you that it's moving forward always. I'm pulling the snow into the center, pushing it into the fan. Another way to look at this, you could stand on the right hand side, look at it, and make sure it's turning clockwise. multiple ways to run a snowblower. What I have here is this is the stock kit that comes with FFC. It's a simple plastic box with a couple switches on it. But if you come to Skid Steer Genius, you'll find we have several solutions. We have a 14 pin CAN bus solution, which will plug into any Bobcat. We also have a wireless whacked six controller, which gives you six outputs. You can use that on a snowblower or multiple other attachments. And then we have this simple little control box that we've devised. And the reason we did this is this is a lot less expensive because you're buying it straight from us. We're the manufacturer and you're able to use this on practically anything that's 14 pin, it has four controls and it's a simple box of just magnets inside. So I'm just gonna run through the different controls with you and just show you how everything works. This is a simple little box that has that speed. Now we're running this with one of our CAN controllers. This is specifically made for Bobcat machines. They use a seven pin control. There's a little mini computer inside this. It gives you four outputs to control your shoot angle left, right, and up and down. What you wanna do with these is just plug it in when you wanna use it. Plug it into your 14 pin, which this is an option on uh, all FFC products is this little pigtail 14 pin. You wanna order one of these, make sure that it's set up for the uh, Bobcat style which is the old 14 pin Bobcat, and then this will plug it right in. And this uh, will change over the controls from digital controls to 12 volt controls going directly into the solenoids and operating them. When you're done with this, unplug it, put it inside somewhere safe. First of all, so it doesn't get stolen. Second of all, so it doesn't get too weathered. Um, it's, it's fine to be using it outside, outdoors. You just don't want to store it outside because it'll slowly de degrade the, the connections. Speaking of this CAN controller, this is a multi-purpose controller. So anything that's 14 pin, uh, you can plug directly into your machine. You don't have to worry about any of the Bobcat controls, nonsense, any of that stuff. You just use this. When you're not using it, just unplug it, put it away. We also have an 8-pin version for those of you that have the older uh, Caterpillar uh, ABC series uh, products that you want to plug in. And we also have a 6-output version of this. So this one is a 4-output, so it gives you shoot left, right, up, down. Um, but we also have a 6-output, which would be maybe for your cold planers, wheel saws, that type of thing. And uh, those are specifically though for pilot controlled machines. Um, this one can go on anything, including tool. So this is our JCB 100. It's a small little joystick controller. Uh, it's got four outputs, which is perfect for a snowblower. It's very inexpensive to use and very simple. Uh, the idea of this is that you would just use it temporarily. So what you wanna do is you can plug this directly into a cigarette lighter, or if you like, you can take this little pigtail off, cut off the cigarette lighter section, wire it directly into a fuse location inside your machine and then just plug this in. And then you've got a nice hardwired connection. But if you're not too concerned about that and you just wanna get up and going, the cigarette lighter option is perfect for you. You just plug it in and go. Plug it in, you take the box, pop it inside here, in where it's metal. This will plug into my cigarette lighter and then I have enough cord here that I can bring it outside the machine. 
So in this case, I'll just put it up here. And then I'll just throw the excess cable inside the, inside the cab with me. Okay, it's just a really inexpensive, fast way to get up and going. Now I've got my FFC here, it's equipped with a full Now this is one of my favorite newest controllers. This is a WAC 6 control. And what it, what's unique about this is it's a wireless uh, controller that you can use with your phone. It also comes with a fob. Today I'm just gonna show you how to operate it with your phone. Uh, it has six outputs, so you can use this on practically any attachment out there. Today we're gonna use four. Um, we have the, the outputs quite short so you can get it up inside the uh, attachment because you, you wanna have it protected. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. You don't wanna have it run over or anything like that. So we wanna tuck it up inside. However, in this application, they've buried the solenoids in behind. So we're gonna use four, of ex four extensions here. Those are available on our website as well if you need them. Uh, in most cases, you don't though. So now what I'm gonna do is just show you a quick install, how to put this in, and we'll wire it up and I'll show you how it works. So here's your, your controls here. We're gonna use the first four, but there are six controls. Here's one of my favorite things here. We can actually change the setup here. And what we can do is set the function. We've got momentary and we've got toggle. So with toggle, I can make it so that I just have to touch the button once and it'll stay on. Or momentary, I make it so that when I, I touch the button, I actually have to hold it. So here, there's momentary. Okay, I go over here. I wanna change it, change it to toggle back okay and now when i touch it i touch it once and it stays on so here we go i'm actually able to use my phone to operate my snow phone. that's all she wrote simple easy to use and the latest in technology all now, when you're ordering one of these controllers, one thing you wanna look for is that we do offer an optional RAM mount. That enables you to have your phone locked inside your cab so that you can operate it very easily from the inside of your cab without having to fumble with your phone while you're driving your machine. So that's a really good option to have. We make it an option just in case you've already got one. You might already have some kind of arrangement for your phone inside. So just check the box when you're, when you're checking out on the, on the controller, whether you want an optional battery, and as well, uh, one of the RAM mounts.